then in our locality also the drainage system water system there also the administration has been involved then when we come to the broader aspects we find that there are certain rights that is been mentioned in our constitution part third of the constitutions and that rights gives us a freedom and happy in a society and a security in the society so in that circumstances there also administration is something which has a very carefully been monitored for these rights that is given to the citizen of india so when we talk about administration we said that this administration is also a citizen of india but this is uh, citizen is having a special place and privilege in the society in the rule of law the privilege is that they are being given certain responsibility to perform and that responsibility also contains certain powers and authority so what we going to discuss is that whether this rights and authority which is given to these officers is being judiciously used or not whether this power is been misused for their own personal benefit whether this authority and power is becoming an hindrance in the rights and liberties of the citizen who is given this rights from the constitution of india so these are the broad questions that we have to discuss we have to understand and we try to find out how we can make measures steps according to rule itself by which we can keep these administrations strict to the administrative activities for the benefit of the people broadly speaking when we say the control the control means that whatever rules and regulation says that rules and regulation has to be implemented when these rules and regulations are properly impl implemented and followed by the administrator and the citizen of india that itself become a control to the administrators so that is to be very important to look after broadly we find that there are two types of the control that we find as far well as the control over administration is concerned one is that internal control another is that of external control when we talk about internal control basically we are talking some of the measures which is been incorporated in the functioning of the organization by the rules in the in the office itself the budget when is given to the administrator there are certain rules regulations are attached with this uh, budget guidelines is given there is a system of audit there is a system of accounting so that is also a part which we say is a control on the administration so fund is given it doesn't means that he has complete freedom to use this fund as ever they want wherever they want for which they want that cannot be done it has to be done according to the procedure according to the rules that is formulated so that we say that there is an internal control also and one another way that when we try to control and uh, talk about the control administration we find that there are broad, broadly there are two ways that is been their control one is that a legislative control other is that of the judicial means by which we have a control over the administration in a judiciary that is known we call generally we call legislative control in any representative democratic government whether it is a parliamentary or presidential the legislature is supreme organizer when because we follow the concept of sovereignty so their legislature are the representative of the people so they are the supreme organization they it that means it reflects the will of the people and acts as the custodian of the interest of the people and so we we say that when we say legislative control means that those people who are the representatives of the people they must exercise in the power in such a manner their their exercise of power may not affect the rights and liberties of citizen of india this legislative control is, is different from one nature of the government to the other for example the president of the presidential form of government united states of america their control by the legislature is different when we are talking of india basically we are going to talk about the india when we talk in india or we say the uk 
there we are having a parliamentary system of government so here legislative control becomes more important so when we talk about the parliamentary system of government then in there the parliamentary system of government prevalent in india is based on the principles of collective responsibility we we know that in political science being a student of those who are from the political science that they said there is two things which is very important in the in the parliamentary system one is known as the cons, uh, collective responsibility other is known as the individual responsibility so it when we say collective responsibility it means that the ministers are responsible to the parliament they are the of the people and the party which gets the majority in the parliament they form the government and this party uh, appoints the ministers in the council of ministers so it is been said that these ministers are responsible for the parliament for their policies and actions what does this mean this means that the legislative control over the this administration under such a power system is only indirect it is not direct it is the minister who is in between you know between the legislature and the people so the this is this system of the legislative control we say that it is not a direct direct minister comes in between they takes the shelter behind the people of the minister responsibility so when we say the minister the minister is is from the ministers which is headed by the prime minister now this ministers is having a, a group of officials working in under their subordinate officer so these ad officers who are subordinate officers are administrators for them there is necessary to carry on the rules and regulation which is formulated and that is what we are going to look after whether they are performing their duties according to the rules and regulations or not whether responsibility which is given to them for the benefit of the people is been carried out in that nature or not but what we find that in parliamentary system of government it is said that anything that is been there in the parliament in debate and discussion this administrator with the secretary joins at this secretary additional secretary they are not been called in the parliament for any questions they have done which is against the rules and regulation whatever question is there that question is raised to the ministers so if any problem relating to the financial issues and some administrators are involved in the misuse of the funds that the question goes to the finance minister any any law and order problem is there and the police officers and other people are involved in the failure of the maintaining law and order the question is asked to the home ministers so what does it means it means that we are not directly connecting with the administrator but we are connecting with the ministers and ministers then get communicating on that problems and issues with the administrator so because of that we say that this legislative control is a indirect control there are some has been adopted in parliament for which is we say the parliamentary control the tech what are the techniques and methods that we find in the parliament which is helping us to keep control of administration for is that of law make the constitution says that it is the parliament legislative body which has the exclusive power for purpose of formulating the rules and regulations it is the primary function of the parliament the parliament lays down the policies of the government by making that is me enacting developing and changing or that means amendment or cancelling that is the repealing of laws so in that way the parliament laws determines powers functions and procedures of administration so all the activities that is to be carried out by the administrator that is been framed by the parliament through a law what the parliament does the parliament makes a law for the purpose of organization for which it is created what is the basic purpose that we say line agency organization then the structure what will be the structure of the organizations what will be the powers of the peoples or uh, officers who are there in the organization the functions what are the functions they have to perform what is the procedure of of carrying out these functions or duties all these are been formulated in the form of rules and regulations so what does it means it means that when these rules and regulations are formulated in the parliament 
then the parliament itself makes certain clauses where these administrators are bound to act according to rules and regulations. So the, the, their functions, their structures, their authorities is defined in the constitution itself. So that we say that the while making the rules and regulation from the parliament that starts the process of controlling the administrator because that law which is in the parliament has the part which makes the provisions for the control of these officers. When we go through the procedure and practices which is going on in the parliament, in the parliament, the proceeding of the parliament starts from 11 a.m. And this proceeding of the parliament starts for one hour from 11 to 12, which is very important hour for the purpose of keeping control by the parliament on the legislature. This is done through the system which is known as the question hour. The question hour, this first hour of the parliament proceeding is the question hour. This question hour is of a different types. One of the question is known as tarot question, other is known as unstarred question, one is known as short notice questions. So here these different types of the question is there. So what happens that any member of the parliament feels that any officers in their constituencies are not following the, following the rules and regulations not performing their duties according to rules and regulations. They are misappropriating the funds and misusing the authority for personal benefit. Then in that circumstances, these member of the parliament has the power to raise a question in the parliament before the minister under whom these officers are working. That is what I said, collective responsibility and anonymity. These are the concepts where the ministers has to give the reply of the actions that has been carried out by the administrator. So when there is a standard question, then in there orally, the member of the parliament asks a question to ministers, raises the grievances relating to the administrators, and the ministers has to give the reply. The system is that the member of the parliament who wants to raise a question, they have to ask the speaker first about the question they want to ask is speakers allot some time to them and on that time and date the member of the parliament and minister and this question is raised i told you this question is standard question or other standard question that means statics is there when question is asked orally then the reply of minister is oral and in that circumstances they are Parliamentary question. When there is a unstarred questions, there the question is asked in writing, and in writing the question is given to the minister. A minister gives the reply of that question in the no concept of any type of a supplementary question. So that means very clear that whenever any grievances is there. And that grievances relating to the actions of the ministers, that grievances can be raised in the parliament for these people. Anybody who has worked in civil department would agree with me that if there is one major thing which may leads the civil servant to be exclusively cautious, that is the question hour. Actually, when the Prime Minister of England said that when the question was there in the parliament, every civil servant knows. Because every civil servant is having a, a um, uh, feeling danger that maybe some questions may raise against their action in the parliament. In that circumstances, any decision can be taken which affects the career of their services. So it is very clear that this is one of the major important means by which the legislatures can keep control over this administration when they are misusing their at all authorities or other things. In the parliamentary system, take the example of India. We know that the speakers, a speaker is the person from whom the legislature first has to get the permission and approval for asking the question zero hour. We know also know that these speakers are from the particular part, political party, basically political party who are in power. So what happens that whenever any questions which is going to create a problem in the functioning of the ruling party, 
the speaker tries their level best to give minimum time sometimes they are not been allowed to give or raise a question the parliament is a question hour so what happens that india has developed very unique system for this control and that unique system is known as the zero hours this is the in invention or this is the things which has been developed by india this has developed incidentally that happened in 1960s when india was having a war with the china at that time the communication system was very not very strong we do not have a mobile and or we and video to understand what is happening somewhere else so what happened that whenever this one hour from 11 to 12 ends that is the question hour then there is a break and after that break the agenda of the um, parliament is to be started so what happened that when the question of our ends at 12 then the people used to rush to the prime minister defense minister to ask that what is happening on the border the war which is going on with china what is the situation of indian army these types of the oh, questions been asked by the member of the parliament from the prime minister or defense minister this concept has converted into a very strong means of the control over the administration so what happens that those legislature who did not get an opportunity to ask a question in the question hour they start immediately asking questions in the zero hour and the ministers whosoever is present there the question is asked related to those ministers and the minister has to give the reply orally in this zero hour which has been raised by the legislature and that is a very important method that is made, made in procedure that is adopted in india and since 1962 which is known as the zero hour it is an indian innovation in the field of parliamentary procedure and practices so we say that this parliament plays a very important role in the keeping control over that there are no other steps that is also mentioned in the parliamentary procedure process when you go through the book by bhas kashyap a book which is known as the parliamentary procedure and practices you will find that very interesting very very small book and explaining that how this parliament is very effective in the democracy particularly parliamentary form of government when the people wants to secure their rights and liberties this is it is is meant to raise the sufficient public importance when which has been uh, had a lot of debate and discussion among the masses this can this can be raised in the parliament that the pope opposition can ask the speaker that there must be sometimes be allotted parliament for the purpose of uh, some issues which is very important debated in the public and that issues generally related to the failure of administration generally related to the misappropriation of the fund generally related to the arbitrary arbitrary attitudes of the um, administrator and then then there the system says that three three days in a week is been allotted for these purposes there is no concept of voting here uh, formal voting or motion here but there sometimes the uh, speaker allots and um, the, the practice says that three days in a week is a lot for half and about these types of the discussions there are other discussions also there is an when the public is very um, um, feels very insecure there are very serious issues that is there in the public then a an a system is there in the parliament which is known as the calling attention motion it is a notice you know which is introduced in the parliament by members calling attention of the member of the parliament about the very major issues which is going on in the society the regular has been there that agenda will be will be there in the proceeding but before the uh, debating on these agenda the important hours this is required for this is to be discussed in the calling attention motion this 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 system has existed since 1950s 54 it is a has been started in the parliamentary system when our own failure of the government is found the government is found to be the administrators are found to be failed in every aspects most of the administrative missionaries are not functioning 
properly then there is a concept of calling a adjournment motion there is no confidence motions there is essential motions these are being there the system that is there for the purpose of keeping control over the administration when there is a no confidence motion then general discussions of the failure of administration is discussed in the parliament general failure is there for that purpose 50 members of the parliament agrees that no confidence motion has to be brought against the government there the no confidence motion is against the whole council of ministers and voting takes place with this council of uh, uh, no confidence motion and when this no confidence motion is approved then that's the whole council of ministers has to resign there is censure motion also in censure motion one or two ministers who whose function is completely failed whose administrator is not performing properly whose administration has become a threat to the to the society and censure motion can be brought so here not no need the for a whole council of ministers to resign but one or two ministers their failure has been highlighted in the in the parliament so these uh, these are procedures which is very important we discuss about of the control administration this is a very, very important system the system also makes a control on the on the administrator this is the most important techniques of the parliamentary control over administration the parliament controls the revenues and expenditure of the government through enactment of the budget we know the budget and in the budget the, the parliament explains about the revenues generation and expenditure for coming financial year in the form of a financial bill and a, an appropriation bill it is the ultimate authority to sanction the raising and spending of government funds so the parliament only has the it is only the parliament which has the power when it has the power then only taxes can be imposed when it is gets approval from the parliament then only the fund can be withdrawn from the consolidated fund of india for the purpose of expenditure it can criticize the policies of the member of the parliament can criticize the policies of the government in the parliament when this uh, debate uh, discussion starts for the uh, budget budget discussion is called so unless until the appropriation bill and the financial bill are, are passed in the executive cannot incur any expenditure i told you that no fund can be withdrawn from the consolidated fund or the collect taxes from the people that is what a system we say financial control over the administration then so there is an audit we are have a controller and audit agenda there is a very important body which is there in the parliament it is a parliamentary body that is this audit agenda control over administration the cag on behalf of the parliament audits the account of the government and submits an annual report to the to, to the parliament so these bodies known as the audit um, control order general is also becomes a very effective tools for the purpose of controlling the administration in the functioning but particularly in the area of the budget there is a public account committee there is a estimate committee in the parliament there is a committee on public undertaking these committees are very important committees for the purpose of control of our administration this public account committee actually started in 1921 itself that was mentioned in the government of india act 1919 but when we got independence after independence we adopted this this public account committee a very important thing is that this public account committee chairman is from the opposition party it has become a convention then there, there is a estimate committee is also started in, in before independence 1921 it has a 30 members and all these members are from the lok sabha so this committee is also very important committee relating to the finance we know that the india is a well the government for the wealth it is needed for the of the two 
So the government decided to do some business, and the concept of the business was given in the name of the public enterprises. So number of the public enterprises, public corporation has been established by the government with the fund of the government giving flexibility in the administration. But these committee public undertaking also has kept control. So that the committee of the committee on public under undertaking was created. This uh, committee on public undertaking is having 22 members, 15 from the Raj uh, Lok Sabha and seven from the Rajya Sabha. So this committee is also very important committee as far as the control over the administration is concerned. So we say that when we go through all these aspects which is going on, we find that legislature in the parliamentary system is a very important body. Legislature plays a very important role in the formulation of rules and regulations. And all these rules and regulations according to the constitutional provisions. So whatever rights which is given in the constitution for the people has to be secured, and it is the responsibility, individual responsibility, and collective responsibility of the parliament. And if it is not so, the parliament, the legislature has to play a very important role by keeping control on these administrator who fails to contribute in the. in the development of the country and facilitating the rights which is to be given to the citizen of india so this is one of the broad very important area by which we can say that the legislature can have a control on administration second method of control of administration is very important and it is very much debated these days and has become very important that is known as the judicial control you know supreme court and high court judicial control the control exercised by the courts over the administrative acts is called judicial control so the courts is become a very important component there we talk about the parliament you know here we say the court in other words it means the power of the court to keep administrative acts within the limit of the law so the court is the custodian of the constitution it gives guarantee so this court has to act so that the administrative acts has to be within that law it also imp implies the right of aggrieved citizen to challenge the wrongful acts of administrators in the court the facilities is provided by the court for the purpose of giving a support to the common people when there is a possibility of misuse of authority we know that the power corrupts administrator a more power corrupts more so that that is what it is been said that when there is a power there is a need of control on them the judicial control by administration is is based on the concept of rule of law where there is a rule of law judicial control becomes very effective the rule of law actually is the is the cardinal feature of the british constitution as well as indian administration or indian constitution when you go through the dicey's explanation or dicey's book which is a very famous book which is known as the introduction to the study of law of the constitution gives a classic exposition of this concept of rule of law so when there is a absence of arbitrary power that means with the power which is given to administrator when there is absence of this arbitrary powers no man can be punished means no man can be punished except the breach of law you know so if i am having a power, officer is having authority cannot use everyone he can used against those person only who is violating the rules and regulations and every rules and regulation second basis of this rule of law says that equality before law every one is before the law there must not be discretion on the basis of rich or poor high or low officers and non official if there is no scope of that in rule of law so there is a there is a need of that the constitution the it says the rights of individuals are defined and enforced by the court it is it is the court which gives the rights to the citizen it is not the constitution which can it, it properly explain it so the explanations what the rights is is this been explained by the court 
so the court in that where there is a rule of law is a very effective means of the con control of our administration but there is some restrictions there there are certain limitations in the court also for the individuals for the common people as far as they want the support of judiciary for the control what is the limitation two important limitations we can say that one is that court says that they are not going to intervene in each and every administrative actions of the administrator. <clears throat> so administration has to function by issuing some sub laws, by the implementing the rules and regulations that is approved by the office or by the parliament. So the um, uh, uh, so court says that each and every action that it is taken cannot be challenged in the court. So there is a limited areas where the people can approach the court according to these restrictions and these shortcomings of the judicial control is concerned. Second, it says that the court will not intervene in every actions in the, um, by themselves, but the individuals who are affected has to approach the court. So what does it mean? Wherever there is a, a flaw of law, where there is a failure of law, where there is a there is a misuse of law by administrator then the person mostly who is affected they have to approach the court so so that means in unless until you approach the court the the control cannot be established so one thing is that the court even if you approach the court court says that in every action they are not ready to intervene second the court says that they will act only if you are approaching the court there are certain major issues where sue moto is taken by the judiciary, which is very rare. But the most of the actions of the administration, the person has to approach the court. So the question is that how the common people will know that what are the areas where the court will accept their petitions when there is a misuse of authority? where the administrator are not using their authority properly and affecting the life of the common people what are the area what are the issues where the court will readily accept the petition again the administrator for there the five important aspects of our areas has been court ex explained where the grounds has explained where you can when you uh, happening then you can approach the court and court will uh, help you the first is known as the lack of jurisdiction. What does lack of jurisdiction means? When the administrator acts without authority or beyond the scope of the authority or outside the geographical limitations, then only the court is ready to intervene. Court is accept, ready to accept your petition. So what it means when the administrators he starts functioning outside his power or sometimes for example if there is a district magistrate of uh, um, and this the dm starts taking action in the district of aligarh that means that is not the, ge uh, the geographical area which comes under their jurisdiction and uh, it crosses the ge geographical limitations there, there you can approach the court and court is ready to intervene technically the, this term is being used known as the over fiasence and uh, that means excess of authority so wherever there is an excess of authority then the court says that they will, the court will always be ready to the help the people against the administrator who has used his arbitrary power in the system of excess of authority this is the first area second it says the error of law error of law means that when the administrator misinterprets the law and thus imposes upon the citizen obligations which are not required you know which is not mentioned in the in the law then in that circumstances the court is ready to accept your petitions that means the court says something um, the rule has been passed in about the something and that has been implemented to the others also you know? for example you see that the, um, the um, uh, um, 
parliament says when the when the uh, tax collection is concerned that if you are having an income of 3 lakhs and all, you, there is no need to pay a tax then in das this this tax uh, officer income tax inspector superintendent comes to you and says that you are having earning of of 3 lakh rupees so you have to pay 60000 tax to the government the rule says that there must be 20% tax on it so that means there is an error of law the main then and this administrator is misinterpreting the law so when the law which is passed that law has to be implemented in same spirit it cannot be changed in any circumstances because i told you that law making power is exclusive power of the parliament so the parliament when it is approved administrator has only to implement and implement it in the same spirit as it's been approved by the parliament so if there is a error of law then the court is ready to intervene the third aspects where the court is ready to intervene when there is a error of fact finding there are number of inquiries been been ordered inquiries been conducted on the basis of the report of inquiry action is initiated by the officer so sometimes that what happens that when the inquiry is been carried out you know when there certain mistakes has been discovered in the in the report that is um, submitted to the officer sometimes it happens the facts are are wrongly be presumed and it is been been presented before the administrator sometimes it happens that two parties there all the inquiries been conducted by one party and no evidences or no no questions been raised asked from the other party so that is against the procedure of the <coughs> fact finding so whenever the fact finding report is been presented is been taken into action and the party which is aggrieved can approach the court making a question mark on the fact finding report so in that the court always agree to accept these types of petitions when there is error of fact finding <clears throat> next area where the court is ready to help you is known as the abuse of authority you know when the administrator uses his authority the power and discretionary powers the officers having vindictively to harm the some persons because of any anonymity khandani ladai the sab that when i have become an officer i can use my power against that that family so if that type of the thing is been happening then the, the court is ready to accept your petitions this technology technical terms this is known as malfeasance so here also the court is ready to help you when this is happening where there is an abuse of authority power discretionary power is misused the last where the court is ready to accept your petition is the error of procedure there is a well established procedure for every action that is to be carried out when the administrator does not follow laid down procedure then you can approach the court that these are for example i am a government employee i am i am here so the vice chancellor has power to appoint me and have power to take action me and the one fine morning i received a, 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 a notice from the vice chancellor that i have been terminated from the services so the power is there with the vice chancellor but the question is that whether proper procedure has been adopted for taking action against me or not what procedure simply i may say that a show cause notice has been first issued i must know that where my fault is and the same time i am being i must be given the chance to to give the reply of the informations or the the allegations that is levied against me if it is not so it is lacking a directly action has been initiated then i have a right to approach the court and the court will ready to intervene and will take actions on this actions of the administrator so these are the five very important areas where always the court is ready to help you in in judicial control where there is a lack of jurisdiction when there is an error of law when there is a, a error in fact finding when there is an abuse of authority and where there is an error of procedure so these are the very important um, areas that must everyone know must know where you can take help of the judiciary for the purpose of keeping control over the administration then the court 
is not having any type of the army prisoners any type of officers for the purpose of of protecting you <clears throat> they do not have any anything that by which they can send to you and to that you are right may be protected the according to constitution there is certain judicial orders that can be issued by the court and that judicial order has to be implemented by the government and this judicial order in technical terms is known as the writ <clears throat> so writs are a very important weapon in the hand of the judiciary for the purpose of keeping control of administration in the constitution there is two specific article is mentioned one is the article 32 which is which is for for the purpose of a a constitutional remedies so here the this article has mentioned three judicial order of the government uh, uh, judiciary of the supreme court or the technically we i told you that it is known as the writs writs known as habeas corpus one writ mandamus second writ prohibition third writ certiorari fourth writ covariant two these are the five writs and these writs are the weapon the power of the uh, supreme court for the purpose of keeping the the administrator under the rules and regulations these power writs are the weapons where the court can use for the pun to punish the officials the article 226 also explains about these writs which is in the hand of the the high court the high court can use this article 226 for issuing these types of order or writs now what is this um, habeas corpus one read let us discuss habeas corpus in literary means this habeas corpus means to have the body or to bring the body that means if for example if police officer who has the authority for the uh, to arrest the culprits the criminals or anti-social elements and to send him behind the bar so if the police officer arrests a person and been sent to the jail and if this police this of person who has been arrested is find things that his arrest is illegal he is not the culprit he is not uh, have any breach of law then in that circumstances that man can approach the court and the court can issue this writ, which is known as the habeas corpus. In the before it was that the person who is affected by the action of the police officer has to approach the court through their lawyer. We know that if that is the illegal detention, that the police officer will not support these um, uh, uh, people for approaching the court. So the number of the cases, one of the very important cases, Naichu Devi where the court has has made a procedure where the stringent procedure has been reduced to a very common mean that if you see any person when they can send a a postcard to the uh, court judiciary supreme court and explains about the incidents where a person is illegally detained then that postcard can be accepted by the court as a petition and the court will issue the writ which is known as habeas corpus to the officer and this habeas corpus i told you that it means to bring the person before the court so that man who has been arrested he will be brought before the court and the court will cross examine the action of the administrator and will try to establish whether the arrest is legal or not if the arrest is illegal then that person will be released that moment itself so in the beginning it was very 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 straight orders used to be used that whenever illegal detention is found the judiciary used to release that person and he must be now free in the society but now the court felt that there are a lot of misuse of authority is going on in the officers in this field and vindictive nature has been adopted the certain power which has been directed towards some um, family rivalries also so the court has taken more stringent step against the officers who are misusing the power the court not only releases the person who is illegally detained 
but also court started giving the order that a compensation has to be given to these of uh, persons who has been arrested and this compensation amount that is to be paid sometime it has to be given from the salary from the salary of the officer who has misused his authority so that means it is very important aspects where the administration always been alert they know that the court has this authority the court will set the imprisoned person free if detention is illegal and not only that a punishment can be given to the officer even the officer can be suspended inquiry can be constituted so this uh, this uh, power writ is a very important real by writ that can be used by the judiciary for the purpose of keeping control or administration second is the mandamus second writ is known as the mandamus it literally means mandamus means command command means order this command mandamus this it is a command issued by the court to a public official government officials a order is issued by the court to the government official asking him to perform his official duties which he failed to perform for example that you want to go abroad and you have applied for the passport and you have submitted the application with all the documents and all documents is been verified and been found to be proper and the fees has been deposited in spite of that you are not getting the passport the passport officer is not issuing the passport you will send a request to him mentioning all these things that is there in the passport and ask to release the passport in spite of that the officer is not taking action and your passport is not issued then in that circumstance you can approach the court and when you will approach the court the moment this writ is been issued which is known as the mandamus that moment itself you will find that within only a few hours a few days you will get the passport from the officer because this officer has to give the reply to the judiciary ki why he has not performed the duties for which he has been appointed so in that circumstances these officers who is not having any threat from you taking all his liberties of his power will be endangered by this mandamus when it is issued by the supreme court under article 32 or high court under article 226 the third it writ is known as the prohibition prohibition literally it means to forbid actually what happens that this writ is from one court to the other court it is issued by the higher court to the lower court when later exceeds its jurisdiction the lower court district court exceeds jurisdiction then in that circumstances the higher court can issue this writ to the lower court uh, in the form of provision it can issue only against the judicial and quasi judicial authorities not to the common administrator it is purely related to the judicial aspects and the, the this the, this it is a very important tools for judicial control over administration highly restricted areas so so whenever any uh, lower court takes actions against those petitions which does not under their jurisdiction then this type of the writ can be issued by the high court to the lower court which is known as the prohibition same name same nature of the um, writ is another one which is known as the certiorari when we try to understand the literary meaning of this certiorari it means to be certified that means it is issued again from the higher court to for the for the lower court now in the first prohibition the higher court restricting the lower court not to carry on the proceeding of a particular nature of the course co case because it is beyond their jurisdiction so it is a negative writ where it is been asked to stop but certiorari is said to be the positive writ because here the court asking higher court is asking the lower court that this case has become a more important and has a effect uh, beyond your jurisdiction so you transfer this case along with all documents to the higher court so that a broader uh, proceedings can be carried out 
and proper result can be delivered. So any incident happened in district of Aligarh. But now that issue has corrupted and become an important for whole state. Every district is affected with that incident. So the case was registered in the Aligarh district court and proceeding was going on. When this um, uh, action or this incident has got a problem in other districts also, and then in that circumstances, the High Court of the, of the uh, UP will ask this district court to transfer that court uh, case to the higher court so that they, along with all evidences and documents, so the broader discussion can be taken place on this issue. So this is these two dates, which is known as the provision judiciary. So when you that you are having anything related with the judicial aspects, that these two dates is very effective as far as the control over the administration is concerned. And the last rate which is there in the Article 32, 226 is known as the covariant two. This covariant two literally, when we say it means by what authority, by what power, it is issued by the court to inquire to know whether the legality which is being claimed by the petitioner for the office is correct or not. It prevents illegal as assumption of a public office by a person. So if a person who completes his tenure, for example, a registrar has completed a tenure, and the rule says that a senior non-teaching staff of the university will occupy the positions when the registrar post is vacant. So joint registrar will become the registrar. So the tenure of the, of the registrar is ended. So in that circumstances, Joint registrar will occupy the position registrar, but the registrar refuses to vacate the office. He goes on continuing his office, goes on doing his, his actions as a, as a regular registrar. Then in that circumstance, a person can approach that according to the rules that is being clearly established, the retirement age is this, tenure of the registrar is this, the tenure has been completed or age um, uh, limitation has been crossed. And this power, this authority, uh, uh, now the position has to be occupied by joint registrar. And joint registrar says that he is not given that authority, he has not been posted in that position. Then the court will intervene. And that is known as the writ, which is known as the covariant two. So we say that these are the very important areas, the weapons of the court, which is known as the writ which helps in establishing a control of our administration. Habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, judiciary, covariant. The court can issue all the above mentioned rates. But what we say that this rates is an order. And it is the government to see that this order is properly implemented. And this order which is issued by the court, it is mentioned in the constitution. I told you article 32 has given this power to the Supreme Court you know, for the enforcement for, for enforcement of the fundamental rights of the citizen of India, which is guaranteed, which is there in part of the constitution. And these fundamental rights has to be given to the citizen of India. So when these rights of the citizen have been infringed by any administrative actions, then the court, Supreme Court, have the right to issue a writ under Article this 32. Now, same way, the Article 226 of the Constitution authorizes the High Court to issue the writ not only for the enforcement of the fundamental rights of guaranteed by the Constitution, but also for other purposes. The writ in, in this jurisdiction of the High Court is wider than the Supreme Court, because Supreme Court is focusing only on the fundamental rights with the help of these rates. The High Court folks focus beyond the fundamental rights also. So there is a broader aspect been attached with this, this rate 226. So what we find that with these rates, judiciary is a very important area, method, procedure by which administrator can be kept under the control. But there is certain limitations in judicial control also. Judiciary cannot intervene, I told you, that in every action which is carried out by the administrator. Judiciary says that you approach the court, then only they will start an action. 
judicial process is very slow and have a very expensive method. You have to pay a lot of money in the form of fees. You have to pay a lot of money to the lawyers. So it is very expensive method. So the common people or, or the middle, lower middle class of the people cannot bear these expenses. So it is said that this is a, one of the limitations, very important limitations, which is uh, um, attached with the judicial control. Self-denying ordinances. That is the judiciary denies to itself jurisdiction in certain matters. That is also a problem with the judicial control. So the judiciary is a very important aspect. Least, uh, nowadays we are talking about judicial activism, judicial review. That is one of the area which is very important really relating to the, 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 uh, the control of administration. But in spite of that, there is some limitations also. But overall, what we find that judiciary is playing a very important role as far as the control of administration is concerned. So these are the area that I wanted to discuss with you relating to the control of administration. If you have any question, we can have the question session now. Okay then, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, Thank sir. You, sir.